And welcome to Unpacking Endpoint Management. Uh, right now, Danny is going to be joining us shortly, but I'll go ahead and kick things off. Uh, we have a little bit of technical difficulty going on here today, but we have a very special guest here with us today. We have Mr. Matt Call, who has come here to talk about MDE Attached. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to get Matt on today, obviously cybersecurity is very timely right now. Lots of Lots of concerns going on in, 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 in we're hearing all sorts of reports. I mean, we've been hearing about uh, breaches and, and, and ransomware attacks and all kinds of other threats for a few years now, but recently it's been elevated even further with some of the findings from Microsoft's own research. And of course we've had the Solari gate incident last year and, you know, these various threats from nation state actors have caused you know many governments to act as well you know the white house recently had its executive order that was mandating that all federal uh institutions you know step up their cybersecurity posture and i matt i work a lot with state and local governments now and many of them are choosing to opt in as well uh, and looking at all those recommendations many of them are getting EDR solutions and getting some advanced threat uh, protection systems like Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And so for a lot of those customers, they're looking at the best way to manage and control that from a single pane of glass. And with Microsoft Endpoint Manager being the kind of the glue that holds security together, I wanted to bring you on because this is definitely your specialty. This is your expertise. And um, we're very happy to have you here to talk about uh, MDE Attach and some of the other uh, security innovations that are happening with Endpoint Manager. So Matt, why don't you take a few seconds to introduce yourself to everybody? Yeah, sure, happy to do that. Um, I don't know if you can see me. Yeah, now you can. Hey, there's a red box and it says, hey, uh, Matt's, on, Matt's on the screen. So. Uh, yeah, my name is Matt Call. Um, I'm responsible, uh, and my team is responsible primarily for what you would refer to as endpoint security and policy management. So I work on a great team of people uh, who are awesome, who are responsible for all the policy uh, and endpoint security experience that you see. And I sort of look after our MDE integrations and sort of our overall, um, you know, user experience in the endpoint security blade in Microsoft Intune. Uh, so that's where I spend a lot of my time. I've spent uh, almost, uh, I don't know, this I'm in my tenth or eleventh year at Microsoft. They all go so by, they all go by so fast. Uh, I've spent a majority of my career doing endpoint management, um, you know, at scale, as well as doing uh, security related uh, things for uh, different customers through uh, our Microsoft consulting services. And then, you know, got was on our customer acceleration team. And now I get to live my dream of building security experiences uh, and integrations for our endpoint manager customers, which is awesome. It's awesome stuff. So. Uh, that's a little bit about me and Steve really gave a really good introduction about um, how important security is. I mean, uh, we frequently talk about this thing that's called uh, zero trust, right? And so many people think that zero trust is a thing you go buy somewhere uh, and you flip a few knobs and you hire a vendor for, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and they come in and all of a sudden, you know, it's it's like, you know, it's just done. And that's, that's really not how zero trust works. That's not how we position it. That's not how the, the industry thinks about it. Zero trust is a state of mind. It's a pattern for implementation. It's something that we need to be aware of. And, and the integrations that we're building in Endpoint Manager help add fidelity to that zero trust experience. And that's that's really what we're doing today and what we'll talk about a little bit with uh, our security management for MDE scenario, uh, as well as some of the other integrations and pieces that we're putting into Endpoint Manager uh, to make sure that um, you have that trust but verify posture to make sure that you have the, the, you know, the crucial triad in the authentication chain, which is the resource, the user, and the device, right? Uh, so that's, that's super important. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, that's the key, zero trust. And of course, zero trust was outlined as well and as a process and a almost philosophical <laughs> approach in in the uh, executive order as well so um you know we just recently had ignite lots of stuff going on with ignite and of course you know we're we're really we're really branding our security stack as defender all up everything is now pretty much branded as defender and obviously there's reasons behind that um but 
the one thing I'm really interested in is how, and I think a lot of our um, attendees are going to be interested in as well, is some of the stuff that was announced around uh, MDE Attach. Uh, can you speak a little to that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for uh, for most of our organizations, you know, Microsoft Endpoint Manager is uh, probably the largest uh, by far endpoint management solution on the market today. Um, you know, we we're in about two thirds of customers, maybe more at this point. And what we've heard from customers is, um, you know, we started this journey probably roughly a year ago. So what we heard from customers is, hey, you know, it's great that uh, Endpoint Manager is the core security management engine for Defender for Endpoint. It gives me a it gives me a surface I'm familiar with. It gives me an existing channel I can leverage to deploy settings and policy, uh, and it really makes it easy without me needing to manage a different tool. However, uh, even though that's there, I have devices that can't be enrolled into Endpoint Manager for various reasons. You know, uh, think about devices that are in a demilitarized zone, right? That are uh, not not domain joined, and they're sort of outside of the wire, but inside the wire, right? Uh, think about uh, scenarios where uh, maybe I use Configuration Manager on some of my devices, but not on some of my servers, and those don't, you know, servers don't necessarily go into Intune because of the lack of a mobile device management stack, right? So that that becomes a really hard scenario. Uh, and also, you know, what happens when I want to expand platforms and expand to different platform types, like uh, you know, Linux and in other areas? So for us, uh, we knew it was crucial to allow customers to leverage that uh, investment that they've made in their uh, M365 stack across the board, specifically in Endpoint Manager uh, in Azure Active Directory. So we started looking at ways that we could you know, build this better. Um, what we ended up doing is uh, with the security management for MDE scenario is we started uh, building in a, a sort of a solution or a scenario where the MDE client itself that's baked into the operating system, as well as the new down-level server client that's available for Server 2012 R2 and Server 2016. That down-level client brings full sense uh, back to those platforms and removes the need for the Microsoft monitoring agent, which is huge. But what we did is we looked at how we could take that agent, they take that sort of client that's baked in or is, is, is the separate install on these down-level operating systems, and we could get security policy to that uh, agent. You know, uh, your security stance is only as good as uh, the settings you deploy. And uh, it seemed like a really heavy lift for these customers to jump through hoops or move through different areas uh, just to bring a device into Configuration Manager or Intune. So uh, we decided to build a scenario uh, that allows MDE to do that seamlessly. And with that scenario, we have two or three sessions at Ignite on it. Uh, so feel free to go out and, uh, and take a look at those. But in this scenario, what happens is uh, when a device uh, is onboarded to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, however that happens, you know, remember this is for mostly devices that aren't managed by Endpoint Manager. Uh, so if you're managed by Endpoint Manager, you have a seamless onboarding experience and you can deploy your security policy and everything through there. Uh, but if you're not, for whatever reason, uh, you can onboard to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and flip on uh, a security management capability. When that capability is turned on, uh, we look to see if there's existing endpoint security policies being deployed to the device. And from there, uh, if there isn't, uh, you know, through one of the existing MEM channels, then what we do is we actually fire up a, a new scenario for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, join Azure Active Directory or complete a hybrid join. And then the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint client actually uses that identity to check into the Endpoint Manager service and retrieve security policy just like any other client in Intune or any other client in Endpoint Manager, which really means uh, you know you don't have to be part of a management uh, sort of story inside of your enterprise. Anywhere that's onboarded can take advantage of this scenario uh, and allow you to have a consistent surface to configure those uh, settings, you know, whether that's antivirus, firewall, EDR, uh, endpoint detection and response at launch. Uh, and then, you know, very shortly later this year, early next for tamper protection uh, and uh, attack surface reduction rules are sort of the next two things that we have up on the plate that the team's actively engineering. Uh, so those are uh, that's sort of how we've envisioned this scenario. We uh, we expect to hopefully get to full parity uh, in the endpoint security profile where, you know, there might be some areas where it doesn't make sense. But for the most part, 
Uh, we plan on supporting all, I think there's 19 profiles in endpoint security uh, over this channel, and we plan on supporting uh, a full array of platforms. Uh, right now, the team is actively engineering uh, MDE uh, security management for Linux, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to release that in 2022. Uh, and then uh, after that, we'll be looking at Mac OS uh, to bring into this fold. So it won't matter who's managing the device. If you onboard with MDE, uh, you'll be able to use security management uh, features from the Endpoint Manager console. Does that make sense, Steve? Absolutely. Um, so where do I configure this? Where do I find this? Because, you know, sometimes we've people, well, let me ask you this in a different way. Um, sure. Where should we be configuring security? If I'm a new endpoint manager admin, and because I'll, I'll notice their security settings under configuration profile, I'll notice their security settings. But now we've kind of changed around the console and we have this endpoint security blade. Is that where we should be doing things? Is that where we should be concentrating on for security management? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Steve. Uh, this comes up pretty frequently. You know, Intune uh, specifically was was sort of born as an MDM and is uh, grown up into a full uh, a full endpoint management suite, right? Uh, and uh, you see some of that in the console, some of that growing. One place that you see that sort of growing or that, uh, uh, I guess you would call it, that evolution is in the security uh, settings or policy settings plane. So there's three essential areas or three different types of policy that you can configure today. Uh, endpoint security policy, uh, device configuration policy, and recently settings catalog policy. Uh, we're looking to, uh, we're, we're, in the, we're in a bit of a, a transformation period right now, but the general rule should be, uh, if you're looking to uh, configure one of the workloads that are in endpoint security today, uh, start with endpoint security. Uh, we've taken a lot of effort to make it easy for you. Uh, if you look in the, the device configuration blade of uh, past, you'll notice that there's some workloads are spread across multiple profile types, and you could end up creating uh, more policy than you need to, right? Uh, an example might be uh, Defender Antivirus. I believe that some Defender AV settings live in device restrictions and then some in endpoint protection. Uh, so it can get, it can get confusing. Uh, that's the reason why the endpoint security blade was sort of born was to manage settings based on the workload for our security professionals to be a sort of a translation surface uh, and allow for ease of configuration. So for us, uh, we start in endpoint security. Uh, if we can accomplish what we need to accomplish uh, in that scenario, uh, then that's when we uh, fall back to either device config or, or settings catalog. Uh, this is top of mind for my uh, my teammates uh, on the policy team. Uh, we're taking steps every day to combine these experiences to make them easy. So hopefully in the future that you don't have to choose. It's just, you know, whatever surface you're in, you see the policy that you've configured uh, and it's easy, right? But there's a number of steps that we need to take to get there and the team's actively pursuing those steps, even though it may not seem like you see a lot of uh, sort of momentum forward uh, externally, I can tell you that uh, there's a lot of uh, activity happening internally to get us to this sort of utopian state. But in general, starting with endpoint security is key. Uh, if I can't accomplish what I need to accomplish there, the setting doesn't exist, it's a workload like uh, resource access, for example, that doesn't exist in endpoint security, uh, then back to our device configuration blade where I can choose one of the existing templates or profiles that works for me, uh, or I can use the settings catalog has uh, roughly about 11,000 settings in it now where I can pick and choose like a shopping cart. I can pick anything that I want out of that shopping cart and put it into a single policy. Again, removing the barriers of those templates of those profile types that are uh, that are coming from, you know, our long history in mobile device management. So does that make sense, Steve, or do you have any more questions on that? I think we're good on that as well. Um, what What about those who might be concerned with, you know, baselines and regulation, and is there anything that we can do within MDE attached to transcend those to those uh, devices that we may not be able to fully manage, or is that still beyond the capabilities? Uh, MDE has a great uh, functionality today uh, in threat and vulnerability management. Uh, where we can start to uh, look at different, uh, when you say baselines, I assume that you're talking about things like, uh, are my devices at a certain patch level? Uh, so there's two notions of baselines. Let's yeah. start there. 
baseline first with like patch level version of app, that sort of stuff. Um, we have application inventory and Intune to do some of that. And then we have uh, the MDE product itself has a, has a, has a um, sort of pillar called threat and vulnerability management, which allows you to get deep insights into patch levels, vulnerabilities, CVEs, all that sort of stuff on your devices, which is one of the great value propositions for uh, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. In terms of baselines, the team's uh, baselines for settings and policy, things like the Microsoft baseline, third-party baselines, whatever, right? Uh, maybe the just a stig, whatever it might be. Uh, we're looking at ways to integrate those better. Uh, you know, today we have an enforcement mode uh, for the Microsoft baseline in Intune, uh, and the team's actively looking at investments uh, to see how can we make the baseline enforcement experience easier, because that's that's always an area of contention, uh, but also the auditing experience better as well. I don't have anything to disclose right now about you know what we're working on, but I can tell you that it's top of mind for the team and uh, anybody who has any feedback on the baselines, auditing experience, whatever it might be, if that's important to your organization, uh, you should do what I tell every other Microsoft customer to do, be noisy to your account team, to anybody with a Microsoft blue badge. Uh, Microsoft is a uh, is is the Titanic of ships. It's huge, right? It uh, it's it, it doesn't just turn on a dime, right? So uh, we're doing our best to avoid the icebergs to not uh, you know hit the same fate. But uh, you know it, it, your feedback is crucial to make sure that we prioritize the right things. So any experiences, scenarios, anything that you have in that space, we want to know about them. We want to know about them often. Uh, and we we really value the feedback and opinions. Excellent. And you know, one thing that you brought up as well that we should probably emphasize is a lot of these features that we're talking about from the endpoint management side is around basically you know configuration, onboarding, ensuring that these devices are protected. Into uh, or endpoint manager is not there to replace the role of the defender, uh, defender for endpoint console or things like we're doing uh, investigations, you know, automatic remediations, we're doing advanced hunting. That stuff is still done from that console. And that's important to understand because um, usually that type of job, those type of tasks are actually completed by security operations centers, which may be differently um organized structurally from the endpoint the end user computing and endpoint management folks so that's really an important point to drive home i believe as well um so the um probably the next thing that comes up a lot for for that you know that i'm hearing from customers would be uh how much further are we going to take this integration with you know in with with MDE and not just MDE but the rest of the Microsoft stack we call it our E5 offering at Microsoft where we have uh, you know pr so many products out there um, you know are is there going to be for example is there going to be Sentinel integration you know how far is in is in endpoint manager going to go in terms of integration with this or is it too early to tell uh, I don't know that it's too early to tell. I mean, um, you know, every every product set has its strengths, and one of the core strengths for the Microsoft product set is our integrations, right? Uh, Microsoft is uniquely positioned to provide uh, integrations in such a way uh, that uh, can be unmatched for the most part by competitors in our space. Um, what I mean by that is when you look at our security management or our um, or even our risk integrations, right? Uh, you know, just the fact of the matter that, um, you know, a, an MDE device can go to a high risk uh, and within minutes, uh, MEM can uh, get that risk score, uh, can mark the device non-compliant and revoke access to resources uh, via conditional access without any additional uh, input from a user is just huge, right? And those sort of integrations uh, are our strength. And we'll continue to build those integrations into our product sets and we'll continue to invest in those areas. I can tell you, you know, we just came out of uh, our planning for the next six months and uh, all of these sort of integrations are top of mind for us. And they're things that uh, they're things that we want to build. They're things we want to invest in. Um, you know, for us, it's more of a, a village type of uh, strategy 
opportunity for uh, security, right? Defender for endpoint. I think you brought it up pretty well. I think you articulated pretty well. Like the security ops team is hunting threats and living in the in the defender for endpoint console, right? Uh, and we often hear from customers that like, hey, we want everything to be in one place, right? Like we want it to be in one tool. Uh, but the way that we're positioned and the breadth of experiences that we have makes that really hard without degrading one experience or the other. So we'll be looking at ways that we can uh, maybe not integrate them. Uh, so, you know, Endpoint Manager is part of Defender for Endpoint. But what we want to do is we want to build experiences where context from Endpoint Manager is in Defender for Endpoint. Uh, so if a, if a uh, security ops professional is looking at, uh, I don't know, hunting a threat, they can do things like see if the device is compliant that they're hunting a threat on. They can see things like uh, policy application status. They can see things like when was the last time the device checked into MEM, right? They can start to see all these sort of pieces of context that don't live inside of the security operations portal, but they come from one of the tool sets that are part of our greater M365 solution. Uh, the same way it goes in reverse for Endpoint Manager, right? Uh, I firmly believe, and I think the team firmly believes, that if you're a premium customer with, with Microsoft and you purchase Microsoft Defender for Endpoint or Microsoft 365 E5, you should be able to have those security insights that are provided as part of that tooling, no matter which point of the console that you're in. So the team is the team is really looking at how not only how can Endpoint Manager uh, provide more context to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, but we're also looking at ways that we can bring the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint uh, data, uh, the data that you pay for because you're an M365 E5 or Defender for Endpoint customer. How can we bring that data into other experiences and management uh, to provide a richer experience, not just for the small set of security users, but for uh, enterprise management users as a whole, right? Uh, which which provides tremendous value, and then. On top of that, uh, we'll start looking at uh, ways that we can uh, closely integrate uh, specifically the security management experience into the Defender for Endpoint console so we get less console fatigue, right? Like uh, there's very little today. Uh, there's a number of experiences in Defender for Endpoint where if you try and uh, go into a security management experience, it tabs you out uh, to, as we call it, to Microsoft Endpoint Manager. But we, we feel like we can do better there. We feel like we can build deeper integrations. And the team is really focused on making sure that that's a seamless experience, making sure that we do uh, things that make sense. Um, that's really the key. We want to do things that make sense. Absolutely. And it looks like Danny is here. Um, do my eyes deceive me? Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you, Danny. You, okay. you know, I just recently uh, actually uh, had a ha, had a uh, wonderful Sunday barbecue brunch with Danny in person. Danny and I actually uh, <laughs> met in person uh, a few weeks back. And of course, Danny looks exactly the same as he did pre-pandemic, even though I had gained about 15 pounds. But uh, <laughs> it's just the camera. It's just the camera. I lined up too. <laughs> But uh, it, it, it's it's good to have you now, Danny. Don't get mad at this question, uh -oh. but Matt, 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 we might have a lot of customers out there that are looking to go fully cloud managed, uh, you know, for a lot of their new devices. They may bypass cloud attach. Again, don't get mad, Danny. Don't. Get, um, <laughs> so um, you know, some of them are coming back with you know looking at basically what are some recommendations for security what are the easy buttons in the console i can go with i hear baselines a lot of times are a go to because they can just simply you know click a button apply a baseline and pretty much ensure themselves that they're secure especially if it matches some of the regulatory baselines that they might have to comply to especially again in the federal and state and local governments um out there and whatever sovereign policies but when it comes to things like firewall baselines you know uh what are some i hate to use the term tips and tricks but you know what would you recommend for these fully cloud managed devices from a security standpoint yeah that's a great question i think um the baselines are uh are an interesting uh are an interesting conversation piece um you know the baselines uh are generated by our friends on the Windows team, right? Uh, and they're generated. We have a Windows Defender uh, for Endpoint baseline generated by the Defender for Endpoint team, and they're really meant to be sort of uh, foundational starter set uh, settings, right? They're really meant to be that sort of uh, that starting place for organizations. 
We've heard some feedback from organizations that when they try and implement baselines and they're already in uh, like a, a mature, uh, we call it device config uh, status, that it can be troublesome and we're looking at ways to, uh, to make that better. But in general, when customers are starting with cloud managed devices, the baselines are usually the, 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 the best place to start. Uh, these are security settings and uh, configurations that are recommended by the people who own the product or the people that work with the product and from a management perspective. Uh, and what they do is uh, they allow you a good starting place, right? So our baselines functionality, uh, Laura, uh, who's one of my peers, owns baselines. She spends a lot of time, a lot of sweat and tears goes into baselines uh, to make sure that they're a good experience. And uh, you know what we've built is, or what Laura's built is essentially uh, a, a starting place for organizations when you're starting out that cloud-only journey, right? So when you start that cloud-only journey, you start with that foundation of baselines, you know, that Windows 10 baseline, the Defender for Endpoint baseline, and then what you're the best way to approach this is to see how that works for your organization and make changes to that baseline incrementally, right? Uh, you know, make that one or two change to increase the functionality or whatever. Right, but minimize where you deviate from that baseline. Once you get that set, uh, then it really becomes a set it and forget it type scenario. Uh, if you have anything that you need to add to the baseline that isn't included, this is where you go through and create additional uh, device config or endpoint security profiles, right? Whatever it might be to sort of create that. Uh, you know, I, I think about it like building a house, right? Like when you build a house, first you build a foundation, right? Uh, and that foundation should be the uh, endpoint security uh, baselines, right? So once you put the baseline down, then you start trying to figure out, okay, what do I need on the top floor? Do I need a kitchen? Do I need a living room? Whatever it might be, I layer those on top with my other security policies, whether that's endpoint security, device config, or settings catalog. I layer those on top. Uh, so that way, it's clear to me where the settings are coming from, and it's clear to me uh, what my end what my end state is, right? Uh, the nice, the only thing where this difference, uh, the differs, I guess, from a from a house, is that every time we release a new version of the endpoint security baseline, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give you an experience to upgrade that baseline to the latest version and compare it against the previous version. So no more like. Uh, you know, 13,000 line group policy spreadsheets that I crawl to see what the differences are. Uh, now all I do is choose to upgrade my baseline to the latest version. I get a diff that shows me, hey, these are the settings that have changed. Do you want to take those new settings or do you want to uh, omit them? And then do you want to uh, keep your existing customizations that you already had? So that way you're just swapping out the foundation underneath the house. And just like swapping out a foundation, there might be uh, some growing pains that need to be uh, handled uh, specifically uh, around the profiles that you've layered on top, right? Uh, but for the most part, it works pretty seamlessly. We get pretty positive feedback. Uh, Laura and the team are looking at ways to uh, make this an even better experience uh, in the future. Uh, they have a lot of open items to, uh, to make this a better experience, a lot of things they want to do. So feedback from the audience here or anybody that's watching this video on, you know, what, what we should give priority and how we should approach it is super valuable to us. Uh, it's worth its weight in gold because uh, the team has a lot of awesome things they want to do. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, which things do we do first? Uh, you know, that's sort of the issue. So no worries. Does that answer hey, your question? Yeah, yeah. Um, question for you. Um, can you pull, pull up a can you pull up a demo? Like show us how we would get started with endpoint security. Um, I, obviously, you work with a lot of security stuff and you know, every time I get an email about endpoint security, I ping you, right? Because it's it, I work with a lot of customers that have on prem, and they're like, "Hey, how do we get started?" So, yeah, I figure if you got like a quick demo of how they can get started, that'd be great. Like, let's show yeah. the people some stuff. <laughs> I don't, I don't ever answer you, but yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> you can do the best thing, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I know, I know. Like sometimes our stories in sync. You know, sometimes people want to hear from Matt. You know, they come to me for tenant attached, cloud attached stuff, and they're like, "Hey, let's go talk to Matt for endpoint security." But it is a hot topic, right? It's a hot topic that. Um, I think we both get asked a lot, like me and you cross paths a lot when it comes to customers, whether, you know, they talk to you about something and they just kick the ball, just kick to me or starts with me. And then right now I'm talking about security because the, the irony is not lost on me that he's going to a tenant called put windows on it on a Mac. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, funny, funny Isn't thing that the here, truth, right? <laughs> we do a lot of Mac security policy, too, and I've spent 10 years running a Windows device. I have no idea how to use a Mac, but we're still figuring out we're learning. 
Everybody's learning here. Yeah, uh, yep. So it's good. So let's talk first about the security management scenario, and then we'll go into endpoint security as a whole. So that way I can don't have to flip back and forth. So here right, I got your demo on the screen. Ah, awesome. So here is the uh, here's the uh, you know security.microsoft.com portal M365D portal. Uh, and if you're looking to light up our security management feature, which is currently rolling out, uh, we'll be doing a gradual rollout. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we have the quality and we have uh, you know the customer experience that we want. So we're slowly rolling this out over time. Uh, so you can expect to see it in your tenant soon. Uh, so if I come here to settings and go to endpoints, uh, what you'll notice on the left-hand side is that I have a new uh, a toggle set here for configuration management. Here, I have essentially two toggles. Uh, one toggle is to turn it on for Windows client devices, and the other one is to turn it on for Windows Server. So you have the ability to say, hey, I want to do security management on just clients or just servers, right? Uh, we have a lot of organizations that are using uh, our co-management features, uh, and they may not want to turn it on for client or create confusion for client, so you can just turn that off. Uh, that's, that's It's fine. Uh, it's important to note that for co-management, uh, adding this feature uh, on your devices provides uh, no additional value, right? If you're co-managed and you're Intune enrolled, uh, you already have the policy channel to get stuff from Endpoint Manager. You don't need to use our new security management channel. You can just use the policy channel you already have uh, no reason to set up two pipes going to the same place, right? Uh, but for those Windows Server devices, which aren't capable of co-management, this could be uh, this could be a game changer. Once I flip these two toggles on, what's going to happen is uh, that security management feature uh, is going to get sort of enabled via the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint channel uh, on the endpoints that are capable. Uh, the endpoints that are capable are Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows Server 20. Uh, 19 Windows Server 2022 with the November Patch Tuesday release. So the November 9th release. I don't remember the exact KB numbers because there's four different ones. And then uh, Windows Server 2012 R2 and Windows Server 2016, uh, both with um, both with the down-level server client enabled. So whenever you have uh, any of those things there, uh, this client will come down. Uh, well, it won't come down. This client will be enabled, which is already resident on the device, and this scenario will kick off. So this enables that command, sending that command to the device. Say, hey, light up security management. Uh, once that's done, uh, there's one other toggle that we need to set up. Um, as with all of the endpoint uh, security integrations with MDE, we require acknowledgement on the Defender side and on the Microsoft Endpoint Manager side. Um, it's a thing we need to do. Uh, but anyway, uh, right here at the, at, the, at the middle of the screen here, you'll see uh, allow Microsoft Defender for Endpoint to enforce endpoint security configurations. Flip this toggle on, and now you have uh, on the MDE side, you have the, um, uh, the clients getting told to enroll, uh, the MDE agent being told to enroll into Endpoint Manager, and then this other toggle opens the gates on Endpoint Manager and says, hey, accept MDE client enrollments. That's the easiest way to think about it. Once these things are done, uh, everything is just, you know, you, hands off. Um, it, the device will uh, check to see if it has an Azure Active Directory identity already. If it doesn't have an Azure Active Directory identity, it will try and create one. Uh, if the device's work group joined, that includes an Azure Active Directory join to the tenant that uh, these two uh, services share. If the device is domain joined, uh, the domain join process, or excuse me, the hybrid join process will take over uh, and MDE will initiate or sort of kick that uh, hybrid join process to get you going in the right direction. Um, so once that identity is on the device, then the device will enroll in, uh, enroll, well, the agent, uh, the MDE agent on the device will enroll in Endpoint Manager. When I go into my Endpoint Manager console, I go into all the all devices view here, uh, you'll notice that uh, the MDE devices, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They'll all show up right next to my configuration manager, uh, my co-managed and my Intune devices. They look pretty much the same. If I click here, uh, you'll notice everything here looks pretty similar. You know, I have a, this client. Uh, it is. Uh, it doesn't show any primary user. This is a device only scenario, uh, right? Uh, it doesn't show any enrolled by, right? But all the hardware details, everything that you'd expect all show here, which is great. Uh, which is all, which is all great. When it comes to uh, policy, uh, you'll notice uh, last week or the week before, whenever Ignite was, time is a blur right now. You'll notice that we we added an additional platform to the endpoint security node 
uh, at the top here, Windows 10, Windows 11, and Windows Server Preview. This is a new policy type that we'll be adding, we'll be moving to over the next few months for all endpoint security policy. Uh, but this new policy allows us to target server platforms as well as this new MDE scenario. So if you want to test this scenario in public preview, you can create a new policy type uh, right from here. Uh, I'll just select antivirus. And this is uh, this is a familiar antivirus experience that you've seen in the past, right? Like everything is the same as it was before, right? Um, we do have some additional scenarios for um, uh, some additional settings that we'll be adding here, right? Uh, but everything here for the most part is uh, is, is what you'd expect. Tool tips, uh, tri-state settings. Uh, we've done a little bit more work to make sure that the settings make more sense. Uh, this is all based uh, on our settings uh, catalog infrastructure, right? So you'll see the same strings across. Uh, hopefully we'll be moving all of our profiles to the settings catalog infrastructure. Uh, so that way, uh, all the profiles have the same strings, they have the same values, consistency across the UX, which is key. Once I get done here, all I'm going to do is deploy this out to my uh, to my Azure AD groups, right? I can group those devices and MDE those MDE devices in Azure AD groups the same I, same way I do any other device. Uh, if I'm coming from on-prem uh, and this device is hybrid joined, I can sync my AD groups to Azure AD and use those for targeting uh, whatever uh, whatever works for you. Uh, if you wanted to create dynamic groups, we've added two additional tags. Uh, we call them system labels in Azure AD to allow you to group only MDE devices together. So if a device comes through this channel, this, this management channel, you could do things like create a dynamic group that would automatically add it to this group when it comes through the MDE channel. So you get to apply like default antivirus policy, whatever it might be. Uh, so we made a lot of advancements there. But the, the thought here is that uh, the device, uh, the devices are just uh, in the same uh, in the same plane, in the same surface. MDE devices are there. If for any reason your device becomes uh, Intune managed, right? Uh, what'll happen is the MDE channel will shut down. Uh, the co-managed or Intune only channel will spin up. Uh, and because we're using the same Azure AD object and the policies apply to both MDM and MDE devices, it'll get the same policy, the same everything, uh, all directly from uh, the Endpoint Manager console, which is awesome. So does that make sense? Anything else you want me to add here, Danny? Anything else that uh, that you think is valuable? No, nah, I mean, it's all spot on. Um, I, I mean, Steve, what do you got, anything? I do have some other questions. I want to make sure Steve doesn't have anything. Yeah, Steve is trying to figure out how to use his mute button. He hasn't figured it out yet. <laughs> we do have a question in the chat. Uh, I think I understand the question. Um, Sometimes there's some troubleshooting false positives that can happen as a result of antivirus and, and security software. And I believe the question was, is there any kind of way to, um, I assume from the console or our plans to uh, temporarily disable Defender for troubleshooting purposes to eliminate that as a contributing factor? Uh, I can't really talk about uh, that scenario at the moment. Um, I can all what I can tell you is uh, troubleshooting scenarios for Defender, uh, specifically for Defender for Endpoint and Defender Antivirus scenarios, is top of mind for us. Uh, we're looking at ways to make that easier in the future, um, and you should uh, keep your eye out on our uh, uh, on our blogs and uh, specifically for our from our Defender for Endpoint friends on news on this in the future. But we're looking at making the troubleshooting scenarios easier. We're looking at a bunch of things uh, to get done. Uh, and I don't want to uh, I don't want to speak on a turn about any of that stuff because um, I'm not you know it's not something firsthand I'm working on, but I can tell you that there are very smart people uh, that are making troubleshooting <laughs> easier for Defender for Endpoint in the near future and Defender AV. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we should wait to see uh, what they release and, and how they think about it. Well, they're working on doing this from a surgical level rather than a sledgehammer approach as well, which you know when you're troubleshooting a sledgehammer approach can be can be dangerous. So yeah, it, yeah, so I that agree. makes full sense. I mean, I agree. Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Uh, it's a good question. We should do better there, and I think the team is going to do better. Uh, you just gotta, uh, we just gotta give them uh, some more time to uh, release those things into the wild uh, before we can talk about them. So back Matt, to you, Danny. Got, um, so yeah, I well, you know, Matt, I'm super jealous that you got to go out to MMS. Uh, so I guess I'm interested because we haven't gotten the talk since you've been back. What 
what got the people excited? What um, what messages did you land there? As well as when customers watch your Ignite videos, what message do you want them to like really sink in as they watch those those videos? So yeah, you know, feedback. Like, tell us what what got you excited. What got the people excited? And tell us what you what messages you want customers to really hear when they watch your videos. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully I say those messages in the videos, and if I don't, <laughs> it's a problem. I'll work on my scripts uh, and such and such. But I don't, you know, it's an on-running joke. I don't, I don't really prepare uh, scripts. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, for us, uh, one thing that's clear from our uh, from our recent visit to MMS, which it was great to see everybody. Uh, if you haven't, uh, you know, if you haven't investigated conferences and stuff in a long time, MMS is a great forum specifically for the management and security space. Uh, one thing that one thing that struck me is, um, you know, how focused everybody is uh, on security. You know, when I went two years ago, uh, or I was at a couple external events two years ago, uh, I got mostly management questions, right? Like, how do I do this with OSD? How do I do this with yep, yep. and attach? How do I do, you know, how do I implement a CMG, right? Like, you know, now uh, one thing that's <laughs> one thing that I think is really uh, really changing for uh, the management industry as a whole is management professionals are starting to think about uh, how they contribute to the larger security story, the security management yep. story specifically. Uh, I, I, you know, we use this term security management to like overload settings for security, but really uh, security management is like this pillar of thought like for management people, like how they contribute to the wider story. And I think with uh, zero trust uh, sort of becoming this concept that is taking off, I think uh, one thing that's clear is that all the management professionals I've spoke to, both in person, at uh, virtual conferences and all that sort of stuff, uh, everybody's thinking about the way that they contribute to that greater story. Uh, and on the management realm, that's the device piece of the triad, right? Uh, yep. Yeah, yep. we compete some, at some level uh, to resource access and to users, but for most management professionals, it's, it's that device pillar. So how do I, uh, you know, key pillars of zero trust uh, how do I uh, securely, um, you know, manage a device? How do I make sure that device is in a uh, is in the posture that I want, right? And how do I make sure it gets that posture? It gets auditing on that posture, no matter where it is, right? And that's where our cloud uh, scenarios really help out, or using cloud management gateway through configuration manager, or you know, connectivity via VPN. These are the things that people are thinking about. So that way, when a device is off the network, which is like 75% of organizations' devices right now, how can yep, I make sure yep, that the device yep. is still secure, right? And how can I make sure that uh, my management tools are contributing to that identity, right? So. You know, one thing that's probably near and dear to your heart, Danny, since you and I sort of come from the same background is, you know, <laughs> a long time co-management was like, hey, I can't enable co-management because it requires hybrid join. And oh, God. Yeah, If you're thinking about hybrid join just giving you co-management, like you're doing it wrong, right? Like you're doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hybrid join, like Matt Call's view of the world, hybrid join is issuing your device a driver's license so it can go on an airplane, right? Like this is what's happening. And hybrid join is giving you things, right? It's not just giving you co-management. So, um, you know, yes, we want to get devices uh, to cloud only, right? The cloud only state Azure AD join has a ton of different benefits. One of the main yep, benefits yep. for me anyway is the limitation on uh, lateral movement. It's yep, much absolutely. harder to move laterally. Uh, on a device that's Azure AD joined, right? Uh, I, I mean, it's not impossible, right? Okay. Nothing's impossible in the security space, but like it's far harder than it is with a normal AD joined device, right? Oh and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like dependencies, requirements, like all of those things that you got to worry about, those external factors that you know I I brought up a quite a bit in my Ignite videos, right? It's the, yeah. Like I don't know, like I feel like we're getting to this space right now where we're talking about, and I was actually going to ask you this, like. I'm not afraid to tell customers like, well, not that they're doing it wrong, but hey, look, maybe if you think about it different, things will be easier this way because you're trying to, I guess, you know, transparency. You can't take a new shiny tool and do the old stuff with it because eventually what you're going to end up with is the same old stuff that you're trying to get away from just with a new tool, right? So the evolution of whether, you know, device management, security, you know, your posture, your attack surface, it doesn't just even evolve with the technology. It has to also evolve with the mindset, right? Because if you don't evolve the mindset with the technology, three years, you're going to look back and be like, 
I got the same thing I did just with a new shiny tool. Exactly. Like, so it's, it's kind of a, sometimes it can be a tough message to hear, but it's, sometimes it's the right message. I wouldn't even say sometimes, like be, I'll be straight up. I think it's the right message, right? When customers talk to us and we are expected to be that trusted advisor for them, right? Give them the right information. It's sometimes the information they need to hear is, is not the, the easy path, right? It's not the easy path. You have to collaborate, get in a room and, and figure out how this process that we engineered, right? Um, needs to innovate to get to be more modern so that you can be at your destination, whether that be cloud attached, whether that be cloud only. I think everybody wants the destination of cloud only, but the path that you get there can be bumpy, rocky, smooth. Well, we give you all the tools, right? That's that's kind of the thing, right? Here are the tools. You got to figure out how to use them because at the end of the day, you know, flipping that story around when I was the IT director, it's like Microsoft's telling me all this stuff, but I have to go figure out what works for me because my end users aren't calling Microsoft. My end users are calling me, my help desk, my team to solve the problem. So I give them the information, let them, you know, put it together in their own own way, right? But they got to have the facts, not the foot to actually make the right choices. Yeah, I think that's I think it's a great way to put it. I think the other thing that I would say too is, um, you know, you should just ask yourself, uh, you know, you should say self, uh, what are the priorities of my security team, and what are the priorities of my business, and what are the priorities yep. of my uh, yeah, X Y Z pill, uh, different verticals inside my org, and how am I contributing to those? And if um, you know, you don't need to make your whole job making other people at your company successful, although that would be a good way to be a team player. That doesn't need to be your only <laughs> right? I think what's resonated with me at least over the last, you know, 14 months is, um, well, like six years it feels like, is um, uh, is like, you know, we're, we've been engineering in Plato's cave for so long as management professionals and likely mm -hmm. as security professionals that we don't really have the context. We're just trying to do everything in our job uh, the best way possible. And I think uh, just stepping back and tying what you're doing to a broader goal, a broader piece to move your organization forward is, is really the key. And that's, you know, if nothing comes out of Zero Trust, which I'm sure that a ton of stuff will, but if nothing else comes out of it, what will come out of it is sort of unifying this uh, effort inside of organizations to get to a place Right. Even if an yeah. organization can never get to that place, I know some people watch this where like, yeah, my organization can never do it, whatever. <laughs> the fact that you are like all going towards this goal is going to bring your organization together and yeah. like make you think about the ways that you do device management, you do user management, you do resource access, and making you think about how you need to change those things. And I think from the management perspective, uh, specifically on the device perspective, we have a lot of opportunity because traditionally the device has been uh, sort of trusted because of a point in time transaction, i.e. a domain join. And uh, with this new world, uh, we need to trust but verify all the time, but we can only do that if we know who you are. And we only know who you are if you have a trust to Azure Active Directory or to some other identity service that has context that can use it as part of the identity uh, authentication transaction. So like that is where hybrid join, it doesn't just you know get you co-management, which is awesome. Uh, it, it, it also gets you the ability to measure that device and know exactly who is asking for what. Uh, and that's right. really the key, like where's the user coming from? And so that way, you know, we talk about this premise of adaptive access and that's one of the key pillars like that you need to understand is I want a user to have this many bars when they're on a trusted device to hop over. But if they're not on a trusted device, I don't want to block them from doing their job. But maybe I don't want them to be able to download, you know, sensitive documents or yeah, uh, access yeah. resources without MFA. And that all comes because I can tell who the device is, right? If in my organization, I can't tell who the device is or it's a point in time. It's not as durable of a measurement as it would be if, if the device can say, hey, I'm device A, and then I can look and say, oh, okay, <laughs> it has, uh, it has, look, it has antivirus, firewalls turned on, bit lockers enabled, and oh, MDE says this is low risk. I feel good about this transaction, right? Uh, so it's super important. Well, uh, we got 10 minutes left. We got um, one more question. Steve, we got one more question and we'll close it out and we'll give the people back some time. We are currently trying to implement controlled folder access. Do you have any recommendations and things we need to pay attention to? Uh, and then they get into the kind of the signal and noise stuff here. To make sure this has minimum impact, we, we currently audited 
uh, data, audit mode is already on via Defender for Endpoint, but it gives so much information that it's hard to break that down for good insights and what to do with the information. I, that sounds like good feedback for NDE team, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, CFA is interesting. Uh, it's an interesting implementation. The audit data uh, is interesting as well. Uh, I think uh, I think it's the noise problem uh, that we need to get through. Um, I think uh, Defender, the Defender team does a great job with being able to dismiss alerts and, and do that sort of stuff in their console. Um, but yes, you're going the right way, auditing first. If you have a large amount of data uh, coming back from CFA, uh, that probably means that the it might have a really large impact on your organization. Uh, so uh, you probably implemented CFA widely. Uh, if you've implemented it widely, uh, your your next step is to go enforce on a subset of devices, right? Uh, yeah. I think what you've I think what you've determined with getting all this noise back, I call it noise. We'll call it great informational data. You, you by getting all this great informational data back, what you've done, is you sort of now understand the barometer in your environment. You go, OK, this could be impactful, uh, so I need to roll this out slowly. I need to do it in a controlled fashion. It's not something that I can just flip on overnight. Uh, so yeah, I can take that information back for our friends uh, on the Defender platform in the EDR cloud side to see how we can make that data better um, and make it, make sure it's a better experience. But I think what you've, uh, Sven, what you've uh, found out is uh, you need to do a bit more uh, controlled rollout than probably some of your peers because it seems like it'll have a large impact to your organization. Uh, so yeah. I'm writing that down, my my new replacement for noise. Um, magic, <laughs> or romantic God. <laughs> yeah, 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 great information that is overwhelming. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it, it's it's cool. No worries, I'm glad, it's, uh, I'm glad you're rolling out CFA. It's a huge mitigation. Everybody should turn on tamper protection. If you don't already have tamper protection turned on, turn it on. Uh, you know, we've done a lot of work to make the tamper protection scenario awesome, uh, and we'll be announcing some advancements in that scenario uh, probably next week. Um, so, you know, keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, tamper protection and C, uh, CFA will help protect protect you against human operated ransomware, or humor as we call it internally, yeah. um, <laughs> the bane of everybody's existence because it's not funny at all. It's just like humor. It's like human operated ransomware. It's yeah, it's like okay. So yeah, uh, super awesome. Uh, keep up the good work, and uh, yeah, make sure that uh, make sure your devices stay secure. That's the key. All right, Matt. Thanks, uh, Steve. Special thanks to you for starting the show and dealing with my technical difficulties. Uh, thought my headset died this morning. <laughs> um, Matt, really thanks for being on the show. Um, endpoint security is always something that crosses all our conversations as we work with customers. So I appreciate you giving, you know, uh, pulling the veil back on that and having some some dialogue with the audience. Um, small plug for the next show. We will have probably one more show before the end of the year. Um, that will be about Cloud Attach, really demystifying Cloud Attach. A lot of the conversations I know I've been having with Steve and other uh, Microsoft field people is helping customers demystify uh, Cloud Attach, why they should do it, and some of those low risk and no risk type actions they can take to at least get some cloud value. Endpoint security, absolutely, absolutely one of them. So, uh, Matt, I'll probably invite you back for the next show as we demystify Cloud Attach. We don't have a date for it yet, but it will actually be pretty soon. So keep an eye out on the blog. I'll be bringing myths. To bust. There you go. There wow. you go. Smith Busters, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All, All right. right. Well, thanks, everybody. I really appreciate everybody spending time with us today. Thanks, Matt, again. And uh, everybody have a good day.